Greetings and thank you for joining me for R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we talk about things that the appeal processes should take into consideration and look at some things that the government is failing to realize in the case of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So our next docu-series um, interview that I would like to discuss is Geronda Pace. We're going to look at some past statements and then we're going to look at some regrets and then we're going to look at some family members who feels that she lied on the, the witness stand and no one's taking the, the, the state is not, the government is not taking this into consideration. And it's just really weird. It's really, really weird. So Geronda Pace back in the 2008 trial was a 14 year old fan who decided to support Robert Sylvester Kelly in his child pornography case. And she was at that time, 14 years old. She was lying to her parents about where her whereabouts and she was going. And then she lied on the, to the courts about her age. And they allowed her in to witness the court proceedings. To me, myself personally, I feel it was a setup possibly by those very individuals who later, <laughs> governmental officials who later backed out of Robert Sylvester Kelly's case. Because why would this young girl be allowed in knowing and the courts knowing that he was in that federal proceeding in the courthouse with an with the minor. Why would she have been allowed in? So the first interview that I want to share is the regret that Geronda Pace has for testifying on the stand, the federal trial against Robert Sylvester Kelly. Let's listen. Absolutely regret. And that is speaking out against R. Kelly and like just coming forward and telling my story. It has been so, so, so stressful. Like I absolutely hate that I even decided to be strong and tell my story because like my life has not been the same. Like nothing about my life has been the same. I haven't had a peace of mind or anything. I've been so stressed out about all of this. And I thought that once I, um, told my story and filed charges and went through uh, the trial and I testified and he was found guilty. I was like, okay, that's the end of it. I can finally close that chapter and just be done and move on. Like now it's finally in my past. I can, you know, officially like just start healing. I just officially wanted to heal. Like I was, I was like really excited that I could just you know, be myself. I can finally breathe. Like, that's no longer weighing me down. Right? Wrong. Because today, Homeland Security showed up at my house. And they're like, um, yeah, you have to testify. And I'm like, no, I don't want to testify. I don't want to go through that again. I testified in New York. I do not want to testify in Chicago. Like, I am done. I... I, in all honesty, I said, fuck it. Like, fuck it. I'm not doing it again. Leave me alone. And it was like, okay, well, if you don't, you know, participate and, you know, testify in this trial, then you don't have to. And I was like, okay. I'm sorry. They said, if I don't want to, I don't have to. And I say, okay, good. It's like, but, however, you will be subpoenaed. And if you're subpoenaed, you have to show up. And if you don't show up, then you get arrested. And then after, you know, get processed out. And then guess what? You still have to testify. So it's a literally a catch-22 situation. It's like a lose-lose situation for me. Like, I don't want to do this. So, like, just leave me the fuck alone. But it's not that easy. And this is why I regret the shit. Like, I, I was subpoenaed. This video was done by Deronda Pace about two months ago. It was uploaded. So let's listen to more of some of the past 
uh, statements that she's made against Robert Sylvester Kelly. Yeah, right there. Rob paid me. There it is. It tells you right there. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it, but it tells you that he paid me $50,000 right there. And it was a receipt for him paying. He was paying $50,000 every other month to me. And then he ended up having to, you know, had whatever. And he ended up paying $5,000 a month. Oh, so where are my parents? Were? Well, my, uh, my father, he was incarcerated. So he was in jail at the time that I was dealing with Rob. And my mom, I was always telling her that I was going out with my friends. You know, this is the summertime when I um, first started dealing with him. So it was easy for me to just say, oh, I'm going out with friends. And then I was going home. So I wasn't, I was there, but every so often Rob was like, okay, you can go home. Because I was like, I have to go check in. Like, my mom would need to see me. So he would send me home, but I had to come back. So that's how I built up that trust with him because every time I went home, I came back the same day or early morning the next day. So I was always going right back. Over the course of eight months, I lived a repetitive life. Sleep, eat, sex. I was with R. Kelly for six months when I was 16 years old. So now you've heard it from the horse's mouth, and I'm sure you've heard this many um, months back. However, to reiterate it and revisit it during a time where we're about to deal with a sentencing that could involve someone's life being taken. These words are very phenomenal. And I believe that the trial court should re-look at some of these things that these women are saying that they've done. And this is even after the court hearings. So I want you to listen to some things about rebuttals against individuals very close to Geronda Pace that says that she was a manipulator and a liar and tried to get this to the courts, but no one accepted it. No one accepted the information. Let's listen. Should not be trusted. They are alleged groupies with agendas because the singer ended their relationships. As the trial continues and witnesses are brought to the stand, Geronda Pace's testimony has been questioned by many, not only by the defense and core R. Kelly supporters, but her own family members. Geronda Pace testified on Wednesday where she spoke about her relationship with the R&B singer. According to her sister, Geronda was obsessed with R. Kelly for years, and her goal was to get next to him for fame and money. In a recent Instagram post, Geronda's sister would share the type of person she's always known her sister to be. In the caption she included, Statement from me and my oldest sister regarding the R. Kelly trial and our sister Geronda Pace testimony in New York. I'm not making excuses for R. Kelly. However, I will only speak on Geronda Pace, whom is my sister that I no longer have ties to, due to her continuously being manipulative, deceitful, and unashamed of the mockery she puts out personally against me and members of our family. Geronda was obsessed with R. Kelly for years. She stalked him and lied about her age to get near him, with the goal of obtaining money, attention and fame. Our family for years tried placing her on the right path, but she had her mind made up since a young teen that she was in love with him, and that was that. It is not fair for other members of our family to be mocked and ridiculed with her claims that no one cared about her and that she apparently had some awful childhood. When I was younger, I continuously supported her, despite finding many inconsistencies in the things she said, even as a young child and as a teen, however I wanted to believe her and didn't ever question her. Unfortunately, it took me getting into my 20s to realize the many lies she has spread and to be able to see past the fact she was my sister. I am only here to set the record straight on our family and make it clear from a direct insider. We had no parts and want no parts either. Thank you. Best of luck to her and others. Her older sister would follow suit with her own statement as well, and she would have this to say. I've kept silent for the most part, out of respect for our family, however even I eventually have a limit. Especially when lies are being spewed in regards to subject matter 
that is extremely sensitive and private to me. Geronda Pace is one of my younger sisters, and although it brings me no enjoyment, to have to come out against her, right is right, and wrong is wrong. Her testifying in the courts against R. Kelly is her right, but lying about certain things, and especially bringing up my deceased daughter, whom is currently still being mourned, was extremely distasteful and unacceptable. My child deserves to be able to rest in peace. I do not appreciate having to relive trauma due to her trying to garnish sympathy from the press because she chose to live a lie and not take accountability for her actions. Side note. To make it clear, I am not in agreement to things R. Kelly has allegedly done, but I will defend myself and family. In 2017, Pace appeared on The Real daytime talk show where she described how she eventually got away from Mr. Kelly. Allegedly, he was preparing for a party at the time and she told him her uncle lived a few doors down and she wanted to go to his house to grab some shoes. He said, okay, but told her once she got there, she was to collect the shoes and return immediately. At that moment, when she knew she had finally gotten out of the house, she said she was not going back, she refused. Not going back, she refused. She said, I lied to get out. I left everything behind. The only thing I had in my hand was a cell phone, and that's because of course, you need to communicate with him to get back in. I left everything, and I just never looked back. Mr. Kelly has pleaded not guilty to all nine counts against him and has continued to maintain his innocence. He faces 10 years to life in prison. Okay, so I'm going to let you hear another video that I ran into, and it happens to deal with Deronda Pay stating that she made history. Let's listen. The scrutiny on the singer intensified, particularly after the premiere of a 2019 documentary series that featured interviews with several of his accusers. Rob has repeatedly and vehemently denied any wrongdoing. The decades of rumors and allegations culminated this year with a high-profile federal trial in New York, where Rob was found guilty on Monday on all counts. He pleaded not guilty in the case. Prosecutors and attorneys are praising several accusers of the singer for testifying at his trial. After the musician was found guilty of federal crimes that could land him in prison for decades, some of those were speaking out again. Jahonda Pace, the first to testify, posted a statement to her Instagram within hours of the verdict being read. She said, Guilty. Today, the jury found Rob guilty. For years, I was trolled for speaking out about the abuse that I suffered at the hands of that People called me a liar and said I had no proof. Some even said I was speaking out for money. Speaking out about abuse is not easy, especially when your abuser is high profile. However, I did it. Me speaking out caused a domino effect, and so many people came forward. There are still some people that haven't come forward. I'm so grateful to be a voice for those who didn't have the courage. I'm thankful to stand with those who were brave enough to speak up. I'm happy to finally close this chapter of my life. I testified, and the jury found him guilty. No matter what you think of me, or how you feel about things, today, I made history. The question of the century. I will lay before you now, our Kelly Appeal TV supporters and fans. What the hell was this woman at the age of 14 doing at a hearing for a child pornography case that was going to go down in history eventually, that was going to convict this man and the court system, the security and all the other, you know, uh, um, sheriffs that stand at the gates of court houses. They allowed her in and they didn't even know how to handle the situation with the fake ID. So how did they expect Robert Sylvester Kelly to know when she lied to him about her age? So the, his, the, the question of the century is, how did she make history? Was she already sitting there 
Waiting is a prop to be played to bring this forth years later. It's very ironic, very ironic. And Jeronda Pace, yeah, you have to pace yourself, sweetie, because when your words come back to haunt you, these are these are the results. These are the results. Robert Sylvester Kelly was living a bachelor life. He could do with his body as what he chose to do. When individuals come and lie about their age and expect a court to allow them to believe that they have the right to feel abused, victimized, and eventually charged with child pornography, that right there shows, ladies and gentlemen, that Robert Sylvester Kelly was set up. So what are your views? Because right now I'm very angry. <laughs> I'm very pissed right now because this is a life, a beautiful, wonderful life that was thrown down the drain and left to exfoliate in the debris of negativity. And nobody on the state examiner side believed any of these situations to be false. There was no evidence. There was no proof. And as a criminal justice major, I'll say to any judge, there is no way this circus should have been able to incarcerate a man to life. So please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I need some help here, guys. I need you to help me to calm down because this is so frustrating. It's so unbelievably frustrating because these women were starstruck. They wanted to just sit back. Oh, we can even look at some comments. Many of these women just wanted to go back to their friends and tell their friends that they had just laid down with Robert Sylvester Kelly. Six months ago, U.S. Injustice right. God will bring America down for all the injustices you have committed on people. Ordinary woman, this is so bogus. He needs to tell the truth about people around him. Screw what they think. They know. They took his money. I will say no more. You draw the truth. Shaking my head. Six months ago, ex-girl 10. I'm sorry, but Deronda needs therapy. If she's not in it right now, she clearly had no business doing what she was doing. Amber Renee, she was a stalker and obsessed with him to the extent of breaking in his house, taking pictures in his house, riding by his house 30 times a day, creating a fake ID to attend his previous trial, getting into a relationship with someone in his camp, sued him a few times, cashed in, lied about her age to him and court officials, and he is denied ever having any type of relationship with her. These are her words. If you read the transcript, seriously, at what point does accountability kick in for the woman? I'm just not seeing a victim and not sympathetic with these stories. Now, in my in my view, I can't say that he did not have sex with her. I'm not here for that. I'm not here to determine that. What I'm here to determine is the fact that if someone lies about their age and a person is caught up in it, Yes, you need to be more mindful. You need to be very, very careful as a predator, as a as a perpetrator to that concept already. But, you know, if you're dealing and you're out there and you are being who you are doing you, then these people need to come correct and they should not be able to use the fact that they were manipulated by him, that they were sexually abused and victimized by him. <sighs> Tawana McCullough says, I truly believe this girl by possible influence of her mother and maybe others set out to do what she did for gain of money. Young or old, people can be very cunning and conniving and has an agenda. She kept going back and forth and suing him and possibly making up lies for this gain. Why in the world would a 14 year old be at a trial for a grown man she didn't even know? And then her mother went with her as well. Why? 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 
She should have been in school. No, it was the beginning of their master plan, period. I agree with you, Tawana McCullough, five months ago, you wrote this on Geronda Pace, I Made History video that is live on YouTube right now under press release. I feel some kind of way right now. So in all ways, in everything, and as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.